Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is a, a quick video on the lesson that I do with Tinkercad and students creating uh, TPs for the Native American unit in second grade. Uh, just wanted to give you guys an overview uh, for what the lesson encounters and what they're going to do. And it'll give you a reference to go back to if you're trying to figure things out in Tinkercad yourself. So when we get the students logged in and the first time they ever do a lesson in Tinkercad, they don't have an account, they will need their birthday because they have to enter in their birthday when they go and cre uh, create their account. <clears throat> Once they're in, I take them into clicking on, make sure they're on designs, clicking on new, and then 3D design. And this is their work plate. And this button allows you to move things around on the work plate and that way you can see it from every angle every side so if you end up having two objects and you need them to touch it's sometimes hard to tell if they're touching unless you look at it from multiple angles this allows you to the black arrow allows you to raise it up higher you can go below the work plate but when nothing below the work plate will actually print on the printer and you can see the numbers the zero for means it's touching the base plate uh, over here on this zero here. So, <clears throat> and you can even turn around and rotate it to the top or the bottom so you can see if it's actually touching if you need it to touch. Now, the other thing I want to go over, I mentioned this already. These arrows, the curved arrows, allow you to rotate it, or you can actually just you want to be very specific with your rotation you can put in here the number of degrees you want it to rotate this is an important button here the undo button so you can get rid of that the white squares allow you to resize this one for height and the white squares on the bottom allow you to resize it in two dimensions two directions at the same time the black squares in one direction and I take the kids through all of this and how to work with it. Um, so we've covered this button. This is the home button. So if they get lost or too zoomed in, they can't figure it out. They click on the home button and it brings them back to this view. Um, this one, whatever item you selected on, it zooms you into that. So you can get up close and personal with that and work within that piece. And then you can turn around and move to the next piece. This is your zoom. Switches perspective. And then we can go back to home. This right here, you can shrink it up so it's out of your way. Uh, but it allows you to change the color of the box you're working with. It also allows you to turn them into a hole, which will become important later. Um, you can turn around and use these sliders to reshape a little bit. Maybe you should bevel the edge. Let's make it solid again so you can see a beveled edge. Maybe round it off a little bit on the end, if you wish. So that bevels the edges. And then this also makes some changes to it. Okay, and then your sides. So you can change the, edge, the way your sides look a little bit. You can see it changing there. So that's what this all does. And up here, it allows you to delete. Um, and I haven't really gone through this part with the students, but then this one over here allows you to duplicate. When a duplicate is, it puts it right over the top of each other. So you don't really know that there's two there until you drag one of them off. Um, now for creating the TP that, uh, that we, the lesson is about. So I'm gonna get rid of these. I give the kids the chance to call out which of these shapes looks most like the shape of a TP. And to call it, to raise their hand and give it to me by color because they may not know the names. 
So they I usually steer them towards the cone and the pyramid. They then have them drag it out, and I show them how to use these buttons. <clears throat> and then give them a minute to resize it. I tell them to make it as big as they want, because the bigger it is, the easier it is for them to manipulate and work with. So now that they've resized it, then we talk about the, how to make it a TP. This is a, right now it's solid. You look, there's totally solid. There's no way for one, someone to live in it. So we got to make it so we can live in it. And that means we have to hollow it out. So click on it, hit duplicate. Now, again, like I said, it's created another object right there. So we turn on and drag the arrow, the box down for one of the, the one that's selected. And then we have to rotate it over to the bottom <clears throat> and bring it in using the black squares on all four sides just a little bit. You don't want the walls too thick because that's wasteful. And you don't want them too thin because then it becomes brittle and, and may not even print. So <clears throat> now that they've done that, to hollow it out, we have to make it a hole. And then we have to group them, which basically molds them together as one piece. And here's the group button up here. And now you can see that it's changed. It's actually hollow. Um, if I rotate it over and shift it, then you can see that it's hollow. And the kids get really excited when that happens. It's like magic to them. Now that we've got the TP and we've got it hollowed out, then we talk about what is else is needed in order to make this a home that somebody can live in. And I let them pick. I don't decide for them what shape they're going to make their door out of. It doesn't make it authentic, but they have a lot of fun having some choice. So I bring a shape out. And we already know we're going to need to make it hollow. So we go ahead and click on it as a hole. And then we move it in. We can make it taller. This blue outline indicates that it's outside the TP. If I rotate this, you can see that it's sticking outside the TP, and it didn't really make the door that much taller. So if I bring it back down a little bit and expand this out into the TP, then that will end up bringing it up higher on the wall. So now I can actually see that it's going to be a decent sized door. Now I might even want to make it a little bit wider. So we go through and re resize it a little bit. They can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to help manipulate if dragging is becoming difficult for them. So and then they drag a box around it again. The door is the easier part and they group it. Now if they're looking at it and they, oh I really don't like that and they want to undo that and you have to ungroup it and then they can change the shape make the change maybe they want to change it to a different shape <clears throat> maybe they just needed to change the size of it because it wasn't big enough or was it or was too big so once they're done they can regroup and now they have their tp with a door in it um at this point I then have them uh, think about what else is at needed in order to make it look like a TP. And sometimes I have to show them pictures of TPs. But what we're trying to do move to is the fact that TPs typically have sticks sticking out the top because the sticks run up the sides and the, the cloth is laid on that, or the fur is laid on that, the skin. So we bring this scribble tool out, and they can make their sticks sticking out the top. I'm going to undo that. And once I've finished drawing it, then I can turn and hit done. When you get it in here, it needs to be rotated so it's standing on its end, like sticks would be doing, sticking out <clears throat> of the top of the TP. So we click on the curvy arrows, make it stand up, 
and we're going to zoom out so that we can see it. Use the black arrows, back arrow to raise it up, and then move it in to our TP. Now I can look and see using this rotate around and see, oh, it's really not connected that much. I need it to be a little bit stronger connection or it'll break off. So I bring it down a little bit, bring it forward a little bit. I can also turn around and rotate it so it's standing straighter up. It's giving me a problem to click on those arrows because I'm not zoomed in far enough. So we rotate it and then get it positioned. And it's sticking it down a little bit deeper than I want it. So right there. And now we have our TP. Final step, glue those pieces together so it's all one piece. And that's all there is to creating a TP. Uh, I've had students then turn around and add in trees and things into their scene and created a little scene around their TP as well. Um, no campfire um, let's see so this is where they're finding the, the people that they just put into their scene pre-built people One of the students found an elephant. Does it help if I spell it correctly? An elephant in another scene. So this is where they turn around and start creating other scenes. And there's some pre-built characters in there for that. <clears throat> All I typically print out is this. Um, some of the students, too, have turned around and brought this out and put words on there. Um, <clears throat> maybe their name, maybe Indians are great. There's been all kinds of things that's been added in. Over here is where they would change the words in it. And then, again, working with the different manipulations. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show.